Hey guys, welcome to Hip Hughes History. We're gonna hit you up with some Cuban history. That's right, this time guys, we're doing the Bay of Pigs, the failed CIA invasion of Cuba in 1961. So why don't we giddy up for the learning and see if we can not grow our brain 10 times its size and let's go get her done. All right, guys, let's just do a little bit of backdropping. And certainly, if you want to watch an older video, you can watch a video on the Spanish-American War right there, or even the actual Cuban Revolution led by Fidel Castro. We have a video right there. But if we want to summarize, we can say that the United States is going to get its feet into Cuba beginning in 1898 with the Spanish-American War, and then really have a hold on that island, even though it's a free republic. By 1905, nearly 80% of all of the rural land is going to be owned by non-Cuban North Americans. We're really talking about business business interest. We're talking about sugar companies and chocolate companies that are really using the Cuban economy for the United States' own economic interest. And then we see in the 1950s with the introduction of Batista, who is, let's just call him a dictator because that's what he is. He has extraordinary ties to American businesses and the American mob. We're going to see the rise of Fidel Castro in 1959, who's going to take over. And at first it was thought, maybe this guy's a good guy. Maybe he's not a dirty communist, but he turned out to be a dirty communist. And by 1960, when Dwight Eisenhower begins to cut ties with Cuba, Castro is going to make closer ties with the Soviet Union. They agreed to buy 80% of all Cuban exports in terms of sugar, and that's really going to sustain the Cuban economy. So Eisenhower makes a decision in 1960, and that's, we have to get rid of Fidel Castro. So he authorizes the CIA with about $12 million to begin recruiting Cuban exiles in Miami to see if they can put together a counter-revolutionary force to take over Cuba and throw out Castro. But of course, first we have an election to deal with in 1960, which is going to see the election of John F. Kennedy. And now we're going to turn the tapes over and see what John F. Kennedy can do about removing Fidel Castro. So why don't we do that right now? So when Kennedy takes over January 20th, 1961, he's going to find himself in a hot pot when he finds out that this operation has already been planned, what is going to be known as the Bay of Pigs. It's also critically important when we're talking about Cuba to talk just about how close it is to the United States. So you can see why the U.S. would be concerned with Cuba only being 90 miles off the shore of the Florida Keys. So whether you're talking about the Monroe Doctrine and sphere of influence, the idea of having a communist with close ties to the Soviet Union, so close to the United States, he's just going to give the United States the heebie-jeebies. And of course, we've already mentioned that Eisenhower has planned this invasion, and now it has landed in the lap of JFK. Now, the Bay of Pigs is actually not comprised of Americans. These are CIA-trained ex-Cubans, exiles. There's going to be a couple American pilots that are going to get caught up in the Bay of Pigs, but for the most part, we're going to call it a clandestine operation. Nobody's supposed to know the United States is doing this, and of course, everybody's going to know that the United States is doing this. So they call themselves Brigade 2506, and they are the military or the paramilitary unit of the Cuban Democratic Revolutionary Front. This is an anti-communist, anti-Castro organization. And throughout 1960 into 1961, they're getting specialized training. First, the training went on um, in the Florida Keys. Then they moved to Mexico City. Eventually, they're going to be training in Guatemala. They're going to be training in Nicaragua. And they're going to make a whole bunch of different moves and finally decide on April 17th that that's going to be the day in 1961 that they're going to launch their operation. So they were made up of six battalions, five battalions of infantry troops, along with one paratrooper battalion and eight B-26 that are supplied by the United States that are being painted to look like they are stolen Cuban planes. And actually, a couple days before the launch of the operation, these planes went to bomb Cuban airfields. Castro supposedly knew this was coming and moved most of the planes. And then a couple days later, they're going to launch from Nicaragua and they're going to land in the Bay of Pigs, which is the southern part of Cuba. And it's just going to be not good. Either Castro knew they were coming. There was also a radio station on the beach, which broadcast the invasion to the Cuban people. And within 24 
hours, the Bay of Pigs is gonna fall apart. You're gonna have over 100 deaths and over 1,100 Cuban exiles that are gonna surrender. This is a big win for Castro and a big loss for US foreign policy. Now, many people wanted JFK to back up this invasion with United States air power and naval power, but JFK is just not willing to take that risk. He believes that if the US throws its lot in with these guys, that really it's going to spark World War III, that the Soviet Union is going to respond militarily, and he's not ready to do that. He was told that it was a force that was big enough to do the job and to really spark a revolution within Cuba while keeping the United States out of the picture. Now, not only is the force not gonna be big enough, but it's not gonna spark a revolution. In fact, if anything, it's gonna create cohesion within the Cuban population itself. Castro is gonna use this like a propagandist master, and he's really gonna unite the Cuban people against the United States. So now that we know it's a miserable failure, that JFK is not gonna back up the invasion, let's look at the dramatic effects of the Bay of Pigs. So looking at the effects of the Bay of Pigs, we have to first put this in context. You have to remember that this is the height of the Cold War. So there's no way that JFK is gonna completely back off from Cuba. In fact, we can go way back to 1823 and talk about the Monroe Doctrine and how Latin America is supposed to be under a sphere of influence of the United States. So immediately after the Bay of Pigs, JFK is going to give the CIA permission to launch what was called Operation Mongoose to continue their anti-Castro effects through propaganda and through assassination. But the the bigger effect, I think, is that this taught Castro and the Soviet Union that the United States was serious about getting back into Cuba. So I think the biggest effect is the Soviet Union is going to counter that ploy by putting missiles onto the island itself. And of course, we all know you're already saying it in your heads, aren't you? This is going to lead to the Cuban Missile crisis. So if we want to say anything about the Bay of Pigs, it's really going to cement the relationship between the United States, Cuba, and Russia for the next 50 years. So there you go, guys. That's basically the skinny on the Bay of Pigs. Perhaps one of the biggest United States foreign policy disasters, blunders, mess-ups, bloopers in the history of the world. So there you go, guys. We hope your brain's a lot bigger. And certainly, if you haven't subscribed, I don't even know what you're looking at me for. You should go do that right now. And I'm going to say it because I say it at the end of every lecture I've ever done. Where attention goes, energy flows. We'll see you guys next time that you press my buttons. Just make sure it's not the nuclear one.